The following is a special Wayne Hills Television Sports Presentation. Last week, after coming off a huge blowout against Wayne Valley, the Patriots traveled to Teaneck to shut down the highway. And as the final score read 34 to nothing, it's safe to say they weren't much of a challenge. But Thursday will be a different story. The Paramus Spartans will travel to Patriots Stadium with bad intentions. Can Andrew Monahan and Dom Santoro defend our turf and lead the Patriots to a fifth win? We'll find out. Hills, Paramus, next. Welcome to Patriot Stadium for this North 1 Group 3 matchup between the Wayne Hills Patriots and the Paramus Spartans. I'm Alex Green here with my colleagues Josh Morkoff and Thomas Auerbach. Guys, it's great to be here tonight. Alex, it is a beautiful Thursday night here at Patriot Stadium. It's, this is going to be a great game. The weather is perfect. I am very excited to be here, Alex. I'm really excited. The music is blaring. The players are on the field. Let's get right into this. Wayne Hills is 4-0. They've shut out their past three opponents, outscored their past four opponents 147 to seven. Paramus is two and one, coming off a recent loss to St. Joe's, 42 to 17, but the score is a lot closer, or the game was a lot closer than the score entails. What are your guys' keys to the game tonight? I think tonight is gonna come down to definitely being able to move the ball forward. I've seen in the past Wayne Hills, you know, having some drives that really didn't work out as well as they should have. I think if Wayne Hill keeps moving the ball, getting some big runs out of their running backs, and threading the passes perfectly, I think this is going to be a great win for Hills tonight. Well, my key to the game is definitely for Wayne Hills to cut down on their penalties. Over the last few games, Wayne Hills has had huge gains eliminated because of flags thrown on the play. Their defense has been getting flags as well, allowing other teams to continue drives. If they can cut down on their penalties, there's no doubt Wayne Hills has a good shot at winning this game. Wayne Hills needs to control the line of scrimmage. They run the ball so many times. 220 yards a game on the ground. They need, they're going to pound it, pound it, pound it tonight. They need to control the line of scrimmage if they want to like open holes and for their running backs to run through. And what do you guys think the keys to the game are for Paramus? I think Paramus is going to have a very hard job containing this Wayne Hills offense. I think they're going to have to stop the run, definitely plug all the holes, and you know, this may be a great game if they can definitely get their defense on target tonight. Well, for me, Paramus just has to play their game. They can't let Wayne Hills dominate everything. They need to make sure that no matter what the score is, they need to keep their heads up and keep trying to win the game. I think, like I said, Hills average is 220 yards on the ground a game. Josh, like you said, they need to, they need to stop the run you know, close the holes or Hill's gonna run all over them. They're a good team, but I don't think they're Hill's this caliber. All right, so who are your key players for the game tonight? My key, I'm gonna go with Kevin Olsen tonight. You know, he's been playing great this season. You know, he really threads the needle. He can really pass the ball. I think if he can get, if, if the passing game tonight is on key, then Hill's is definitely gonna have a big win tonight. I would definitely love to see Kevin step up and make some big passes. Well, I would have to go with Eric Moskal. He helps out Andrew Monahan take off the heat on punt returns and kick returns. He's also out there on the defense helping out, also a wide receiver. He's coming off of a sprained ankle recently, so it's going to be fun to see how he can cope with that against another good team. Tom, you mentioned Andrew Monahan, and he is my key player for the night. He has scored three touchdowns each in each of his past three games. He's really carried the team on his back after, after Troy Zafino's injury. Troy was the captain, Monahan's the captain. And I think I'm looking for another one or two punt return touchdowns from Monaghan tonight. Do you guys have any score predictions? I do. Um, I'm going to go with 28-7. to 7. I know Hills has had a few shutouts in the past, but I think tonight's going to be a little bit more of a competition, but definitely still a Hills football win. Well, I agree. Paramus is a much better team than what they've played in the past, and Wayne Hills has been scoring a lot of points, so I'm going to have to go with 44-7 to 7, Wayne Hills. 
I've talked to the linemen, I've talked to the Avedisians. They said they do not want to give up points this game. They know Paramus is the best opponent they've faced so far. And in the upcoming weeks, they're actually going to be with one of their weaker opponents. They don't want to give up points, and they want the offense to play well. I think 28-0 is going to be the final score. I hope I'm right <laughs> for a fourth shutout in a row. You know, who really knows? But I'm really excited for the game tonight. Paramus is a good team. As you know, Hills is a good team. And I think we're going to be in store for a great game tonight. Oh. With that, thank you guys for being here. And we'll go up in the booth in a few minutes. But right now, we're going to the, in the locker room for On the Line. Welcome to On the Line. I'm Alex Green, here with the Wayne Hills twin lineman duo of Jason and Justin Avedisian. Guys, it's great to have you here for the fifth week in a row. Anytime I can get out of robotics or any class or get out of school and come shoot this, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> I just want to let you know that the team is 4-0 so far when we shoot this segment, and I do expect that trying to continue in the big home game tonight against Paramus. Paramus is 2-1 with that one loss coming against St. Joe's, 42-17. But when we look at the final score, you know, it's a blowout, but the game was a lot closer. It was, it was like 14-10 at halftime. So I think Paramus is a lot better than that final score indicates. They're actually probably like the best team you played this season so far. Uh, I'm not saying the previous four games, you know, those teams were bad, but you know, I don't. I just think Paramus plays everybody competitively. You guys think so too? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've we haven't had the toughest games. You know, we have good teams, but Paramus is by far the best team we've played. You know, we got to play good. If if we don't come out and play our game, you know, they're good enough to beat us. They're a good team, and we just gotta we gotta play our game. They know Wayne Hills is you know the top public school you know football team in North Jersey, and they want to you know dethrone the king basically. So you know, how do you guys plan on? You know, playing your game tonight so they don't beat you, so they don't dethrone the king. Um, you know, I think we're going to stick to our usual game plan. I mean, we're getting everybody's best shot every week. Uh, you know, everybody looks at Wayne Hills on the schedule, circles it, and uh, we're usually in for a war every Friday. Well, this case Thursday. <laughs> Very true. Although, you know, unfortunately, it always feels like a Friday at game time. You know, the crowd is always out there, and I, the cheerleaders are pumped up, and I expect the crowd to do the same thing tonight. The defense has been absolutely spectacular this season, allowing you know seven points in your four games, including three consecutive shutouts. They've scored. The offense has been pretty good too, along with the special teams led by you know Andrew Monahan. They've scored 141 unanswered points this season. That's absolutely ridiculous. Do you expect that trend to continue tonight? Absolutely. I mean, Coach Demikoff does a great job with our defense. You know, he's been here for a long time. He's a success. He's the reason to it behind our Patriot. Uh, or why our defense is so good, why we've been so good for all the past years. He does a great job, and uh, offense, you know, everybody knows Wayne Hill's offense, what we're about. We're just going to put up points on the board, and our defense is going to hold them, and that's why we get so many wins. Yeah, you know, i got to say it's pretty cute, you guys, you know, sharing microphones, you know, the Twin Towers. It. It's, it's pretty cute. It. I always like, you know, asking you guys if you have any score predictions. And, Jason, you've been spot on or pretty close a few times. Like, you guys, like T-Nac, you guys would be 35 nothing, and I believe it was 34 nothing. Yeah. And Justin, well, <laughs> he disagrees with me. There's um, there are a few games left in the season to get better, yeah. <laughs> say the least. So, what are your score predictions for tonight's game? Uh, tonight, uh, give me, give me, uh, I'm gonna have two predictions here. All right, give me thirty-five-three. <laughs> I'm not too confident, but uh, give me, uh, I'm liking thirty-eight nothing. Thirty-eight nothing sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, um, 38 nothing sounds good. You know, I think um, I, I think in the first quarter we'll definitely be tuss, te uh, tested. You know, I, I, it, it could easily be 3 nothing by the end of the first. And, um, you know, it's going to be one of those games, halftime, you know, maybe 17 nothing Hills. I mean, it's, it's, I don't think it's going to be crazy blowout. But in the end, I think if we do our job, our defense bends, doesn't break, 38 nothing sounds good. So a four straight shutout. Do you have any like key players or players maybe you know that aren't always in the spotlight that you think will really come through big tonight? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, basically, obviously on both sides of the line, the line obviously that's what the show is about. We're the guys, absolutely. you know. Coaches always tell us all week, you know, we're gonna win if we can control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. There's no doubt we're gonna win. But for skill position guys this week, watch out for uh, Dom Santoro. You know, he's been getting more and more reps at tailback every week, and uh, we have all the confidence in the world in him. He's just gonna go out there and show everybody what he can do. Justin, let's hear it. Uh, you know, I think Andrew's going to have a good game, have a couple touchdowns, do well on special teams. Um, but, you know, I, I agree. I think uh, Dom Santoro is definitely going to get some more touches today. 
and um, you know, a couple big plays maybe and put a couple points on the board. You know, I think next week we're going to have to switch around you guys so you can talk first and not just agree with your brother the whole time. But that is all the time we have in this segment. Thank you guys for being here tonight, and good luck in the big game. Thanks. So we will see you guys next week. And with that, we are going to the locker room to hear another one of Coach Olson's pregame speeches. Here's what it comes down to. Who's more physical? Who's faster in cover? Very simple. That's what he wants to do. Right? It's not about the X's and O's. It's about the Johnny's and the Joe's. The guys that play, right? Now, we can draw up anything we want on the board. Everything works on the board. Right? We got to have some guys back there that want to play. Let's go, baby. Right? You got a perfect night. Your house. They need this. They're going to fight for their lives, guys. I, I know their coach. He's a good coach. Those kids are going to play hard. But simply put, they're not as good as us. But they're good enough to beat you if we don't play well. That's the bad thing. They're good enough to beat you if we don't play well. Right in. Welcome to Patriot Stadium on the campus of Wayne Hills High School for tonight's Big North Conference football game between the Patriots of Wayne Hills and the visiting Spartans of Paramus High School. The officials in tonight's game are the referee Mike Rittenauer, the umpire Jeff Rittenauer, the linesman Steve Zoss, the back judge Greg Peterson, the line judge Greg Bailey, and the clock operator Raymond Skoll. I, I think they only updated. Oh, well, once a week. But what's a day? Oh, it is. And here is the update. starting yeah. offensive lineup. No, I mean they update oh. the standings. For oh, the yeah. Patriots. Oh, At wide receiver number one, Andrew Monahan, number one. At tight end, number 37, Ryan Carter, number 37. At tackle, number 70, Justin Abedizian, number 70. At guard, number 66, Corey Concord, number 66. At center, number 59, Garrett Rubin, number 59. At guard, number 72, Roberto Alvarez, number 72. At tackle, number 75, Jason Avedisian, number 75. At wide receiver, number 80, Jeff Dingyak, number 80. At wide receiver, number 22, Eric Musco, number 22. At tailback, number 27, Justin Beveridge, number 27. At fullback, number 84, Joe Lane, number 84. At quarterback, number 19, Devin Olsen. And let's welcome the rest of the Patriots squad.
Welcome back to Patriot Stadium. On this, actually got pretty cold uh, Thursday night for this game between the Wayne Hills Patriots and the Paramus Spartans. We're about to go to kickoff. And guys, I'm pretty excited for tonight. We said in pregame it should be a pretty exciting game. Paramus is 2-1 and one with our one loss coming to the parochial school, St. Joe's. And it was a close game. It was 42-17. But it was very close at halftime before St. Joe's ran away with it. Sort of like the Wayne Hills St. Joe's game last year. What do you guys think about tonight? You know, I think uh, judging on how they looked in practice, uh, the Wayne Hills football team is ready. They're all ready to go. They're looking warm. I think it's going to be a great game tonight, Alex. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Wayne Hills, they just have been a very dominant football team. If they just continue what they're doing, they should have no problem taking down their opponent. We were in the locker room for Coach Olson's speech, and I got to say it was electrifying once again. What were the? Uh, what did you guys think of it? Electrifying as always. Yeah, you know what? Coach Olson definitely knows how to light a fire under all these players, and he knows how to get them going. I, I mean, I think that's one of the key factors behind this Wind Hills football team: the amount of motivation, the amount of drive they have from their coach, who's he's been doing it for a long time, and he, he's got a very successful fo football team, as we all know. His win against Eastside was actually his 250th wow. 50th of his career. Now he actually started at Eastside, so it's sort of uh, ironic right there. Yeah, you're right. Um, although it's a Thursday night, I, I got to say the crowd is pretty full, at least the Wayne Hills crowd. The band is uh, pumping, the cheerleaders are fired up, obviously the team is fired up. Wayne Hills is really a big football school. Yeah, you know, and even though it's a weekday, it's it's got the same amount of support from the town uh, you know football is very big to the the Wayne community I think I mean you got to think about it like homework or football game and uh, <laughs> I'm here <laughs> yeah same a lot of people have the same thought as you <laughs> <laughs> and as we see a coin to us so we I said it before and Monahan's out there right now. Monahan's my key player for the game. I'm expecting a big game from him. I don't see, you know, I want to say three touchdowns for his fourth game in a row, but I, that's a pretty tough task. Well, I think Paramus, knowing they scored three touchdowns for three games in a row, will have to be marking him very tightly, possibly double coverage. Something very interesting is <laughs> I looked on the stats, and Paramus, in their three games they've played, have not scored in the first or third quarter. <laughs> While Wayne Hill scores a combined nearly 20 points in the first and third quarter. So that should be interesting to see how that breaks down. <laughs> Hill's average is 37 points a game to Paramus' 17. But then again, Paramus is a very competitive team, plays every, every team, especially the best public school in North Jersey, competitively. Plus, remember, Wayne Hills hasn't had an exactly difficult first few games. We just found out Wayne Hills has won the coin toss and will receive in the second half. So, Alex, I think uh, statistically thus far, Wayne Hills has this football game, on paper at least. But if Paramus can step it up, maybe show Wayne Hills football something, a little something new, it'll be a good game tonight. Well, that's the first part of, the, of winning a game is having the, a better mental state over your opponent, and Wayne Hills has that thus far. Both teams average nearly 300 yards a game, so they're both, off, both offenses are really, you know, high powered. <laughs> Hills' passing game only averages about 90 yards, but their running game is 220 yards a game. But remember, so I expect, a, you know, I expect them to pound it tonight with their three or four running backs. Remember, that that's all with Kevin Olsen missing the second half against Eastside and also missing most of the second half against Wayne Valley, so that's without their stud quarterback in for some of the game. That's Tr true, but you have to keep in mind that Troy Zafino, their star running back, did get injured. Exactly what I was going to say, you right. know, all the, uh, it, showing that, that amount of yardage per game, it just, it, it's, it's amazing, especially for a team who doesn't have their number one running back out in the field, and it really goes, just goes to show that Wayne Hills has the arsenal, they've got the guys to pick up the slack. And sophomore Eric Martinez lines up for the kickoff. And we're off. On the return, it seems to go down there at about the 15-yard line, a 12-yard return. Well, Wayne Hills' special teams have been outstanding the past few games. 
They've been scoring touchdowns, and they really have been giving the opposing team terrible field position. I, Alex, I don't know if you noticed that, but uh, kind of looked like it just, everything just slowed down for a second at the end. There. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was Joe Rizzatello, senior wide receiver on the return. You know, that play on the end around went for a lot more. It was a lot It was a lot more running than for just a three-yard gain. So now it's second and seven. And Kyle Hunsiger on the tackle. Well, Wayne Hills can really put a blow to this Paramus offense by making them going three and out on their first possession. You know, that's just a lot of a football team. You know, one that can stop stop the offense early on in the game is just a force that is it's to be reckoned with. And if Wayne Hill's defense can show Paramus what they've been doing um, week in, week out, then they're really going to have an effective defense this game. Just 42 seconds into the game, Wayne Hills has called their first timeout, so I'm a bit concerned and confused as to why they did that. But one of the senior captains of Paramus High School is Michael Busanich, uh, six foot tall quarterback of the team. He's passed for about 170 yards a game, so he's certainly doing a pretty decent job as quarterback. So it'll be interesting to see how, I don't want to say depleted secondary, but a secondary without your best cornerback in Troy Zafino can neutralize a pretty decent quarterback. Sanich puts a man in motion. And that is a big first down for Paramus. A gain of about 14 yards. Well, he was wide open that play. It looked like Wayne Hills might have been in a zone defense. And the throw was right on target, right in the middle of four defenders. We just said Busanich was a good quarterback. And that was caught by Joe Rizzatello, who also returned the kick for 12 yards. So it is first and 10 for the Spartans on the way to 32 yards. Alex, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of um, a connection between Joe Rizzatello. And the quarterback Tello. scramble. And that went for a surprisingly big gain. Uh, it looks to be about eight yards. I, I think tonight what I was saying was I think we're going to see a big connection between um, Bucinich and um, Rizzatello, I guess. From what, what from what I understand, they're pr they're um, two key players on this Paramus squad, and um, maybe we could see some nice pass plays from them. Hopefully, Wayne Hills can stop stop them and not allow the holes to be open. We saw that Busanich looks to be a dual threat quarterback right there, pretty quick on his feet for the game of nine. So it's second and one. And looks to be a fullback dive for a two yard gain in the first down. Well, just by looking, I don't know the exact weights or sizes, but the offensive line of Paramus looks gigantic compared to the Number Wayne Hills team. It's very true. They actually have a pair of brothers on the team, <laughs> just like Wayne Hills, but they are not twins. They are a year apart. Joe and Zach Zisman, both linemen. That was senior captain Chris Durante with a two-yard gain. And an empty backfield. There's a screen pass to Rizzatello, and there is a flag on the play after the minimal gain. Number 21, Joe Rizzatello on the carry. You see, once again, the, uh, the play to, to Joe Rizzatello, he's got, I, I'm going to say he's the number one receiver for this Paramus squad, and I think Wayne Hills, if they want to have um, some effective defense and drives, they're going to have to put a stop on him and definitely keep their eye out for him. And there was holding against the Spartans on that play, so that'll bring it back to about first and 20. And, Tom, you said it in pregame, penalties have killed Wayne Hills in the past. And it's not just for Wayne Hills. It, penalties can kill any drive for any team. Yeah, well, right there. I mean, Paramus needed maybe 10 more yards to, uh, maybe 20 yards to get into th within field goal range to score their first points of the and first quarter. 
more flags there. I'm not sure whether an offensive lineman jumped or it was neutral zone infraction on the defense. And that's two penalties in a row, a legal procedure against the Spartans. That'll move back another five yards, making it first and about 20. You know, already the Spartans just looking like an unorganized team, and this really is, set, is setting the bar for them so far. If, if you're going to come out in the football field and, you know, just make this impression, it, it really says something about your team. They were having a good drive until those two penalties. Let's see how they can rebound. Yeah. On first and 20. Fakes the handoff, Busanich. And with a gain of about four. Well, he broke a few tackles on that last run. He avoided two defenders back in there that would have been the tackles for loss and ended up making up four yards. So he's a very agile quarterback. I think um, uh, the Wayne Hills defense had their work cut out for them on that play. That was just, I'm going to have to say, that was just not a great play call in that situation. They've got a lot of yards to go and to just do a quarterback sneak right there probably wasn't the best idea. Busanich did fake the handoff, but I don't know whether there was some miscommunication because it did not look like an True. intentional faked handoff. True. Oh, that, that's Wayne Hills. And that looks to be neutral zone infraction on Wayne Hills. Number 72, Roberto Alvarez. And that was obvious also. Yeah. There was <laughs> no offensive line move that time. <laughs> And that'll make it second and 11 after the encroachment by Wayne Hills. They're just trading off penalties, guys. <laughs> Santa just four wide and one in the backfield. Whoa. And it's intercepted. Not a good pass there by Busan. It's starting to triple coverage, and Andrew Monahan, my key player, with the interception. <laughs> you know, I love when you can see a, a, a big play like that happen, when you can see the, the guy from the backfield coming up and making that catch. That's just a complete change in momentum for the Wayne Hills football team. I think they're going to keep pushing forward after that. Fantastic field position. Monahan with a 10 yard return to at the 32 yard line of Paramus. And that is a huge game changer. Paramus was striving, albeit with you know, a few penalties set on them back, but that's a huge game changer. Starting your first drive in your opponent's 32-yard line is a great way to start off the night, especially for a team that scores you know, 12 points on average in the first quarter. Now they just got to capitalize. They got to make something happen and plunge the ball into the end zone. Timeout, and Wayne Hills takes a second timeout. And we're just over four minutes into the game. Guys, what do you think is the reason for this? I think it's a personnel issue on Wayne Hills. As you see, a player coming off the field late. I saw Coach Olsen slam his clipboard into the ground before calling a timeout. He had to see something that wasn't right in his offense. He doesn't want to give up this great field position that could really put them ahead for good in this game. One thing I noticed when, Josh, uh, we were doing the hack and sack game a few weeks ago is that Hills really did use up its penalties, I think all three in the first quarter. And I was upset by that, I think you saw it. Yeah, and that. they've already used up two right now, and I hate to see that happen because they can be so important, you know, when it comes down to the two minute drill and everything. But, you know, let's hope, you know, with this good field position, Hills can take an early lead and put the game away early. You know, sometimes you're gonna, you're, um, a lot of the time you're gonna need these timeouts later in the game, and to, to not manage them correctly can really be detrimental to your team. See the first snap from Kevin Olson. And he's passing. And a beautiful pass from Olson. Down to the nine yard line. 23 yards. Monahan again on the reception. He is having a fantastic game, and we're just five minutes in. This is exactly what I wanted to see from Olson, number 19, my key player, um, connecting with your key player, Monahan. Uh -huh. And I love seeing the passing game uh, from Wayne Hills football. When Olsen threads the needle and he makes these plays, this is what's really going to get the momentum going. He's really matured so much in his you know, few years on the team. Handoff there looks to be a gain of about four, maybe five. Number 
Well, back to that passing play to Monahan, the defensive back who was marking him looked to be a good four or five inches taller than him, but Monahan just jumped up and took the ball right out of his hands. Yeah, that was definitely a demonstration of athleticism by Monahan on that play. So Justin Bevert on the carry last time. Let's see if he gets it again. And another handoff, but this one goes right into the middle of the line for a very minimal gain. And it looks to be about th third and four, third and goal from the four. I'd like to see a pass play right here. I'll, I think play action would be, yes. you know, very good. I think, you know, like I said, Kevin Julie matured since playing his first year on varsity last year, and I think he's grown up a lot, and I'd like to see him, you know, get some more passing opportunities. It's amazing that he's only a junior. He's got <laughs> another year here. You have the toss play. <laughs> and stop behind the line of scrimmage at the five-yard line is Dom Santoro. I'm not sure if it affected the play at all, but I noticed um, Olsen fell on that play. Maybe it uh, he tossed a little off. Limping off the field, so that's certainly not good for Wade Hill, but I'm sure it's just a little, maybe he tripped on something. Yeah. So it's fourth and four. And Monahan to hold. Eric Martinez lining up for the field goal. And that one goes straight through the uprights, and just like that, it's a 3 0 Wayne Hills game. And you'd like to see Wayne Hills capitalizing off the turnovers early in the game. You know? yeah, but we also see right there, Paramus has a good defense. They just stopped Wayne Hills at their own goal line, which is something Wayne Hills has to be worried about because that means that their defense really has to step up and prevent Paramus from scoring any points. If Paramus is going to continue to stuff the holes, I think um, Olsen's really going to have to step up and put emphasis on the, on the passing game. And, and, and if Hills can do that effectively tonight, they're definitely going to get the W. When you're on your opponent's four-yard line, four line, there's only so, so little space to go. I didn't, you know, I didn't see a toss play coming. I thought maybe a handoff, but Paramus certainly saw it coming, stomped down behind the line. But it's a 3 nothing game. Wayne Hills is on the board. And it's a, it's a good start to the night. So we'll see how Paramus' offense can rebound from that turnover. But the defense doesn't look good on that drive. And Eric Martinez to kick off again. Six foot, 200 pound kicker, Eric Martinez. He's another kid who's got, got a future for Wayne Hills football. He's only a sophomore. He's got a great leg, like, see that kick right there. High kick, caught about the 11-yard line. And this looks to be a big return. And it is by number 22, Tyler Garguilo. Out to what looks to be about the 37, 38-yard line. So that is fantastic starting field position for the Paramus Spartans. Looking at the roster for Paramus, they're not a very tall team. The tallest player on their team is six foot four. There are two six foot four players. It's pretty tall though. For high school. But you know, <laughs> they're really outliers. Yeah. And a handoff there goes for a minimal gain of two yards. And Chris Durante looks to be their main running back for the night. He is their senior captain. So your two captains are your quarterback and your running back, and I expect to see a lot of them. It's obviously quarterback. And like you said, Joseph Ritatello. Uh, also a senior, I think we'll see a lot of him. So it's second and nine after the minimal gain. And ha hand off there to Gargillo, and that is a huge hole and a huge gain. You know, out to the 50-yard line. Nine yards, first w down. Wayne Hills really should be stuffing those holes. That is a big run, and if they can keep moving the ball forward, uh, th that Paramus running game is going to be a big problem for the Wayne Hills defense. Well, remember before Paramus had those two back-to-back -back penalties thrown on them, they were moving up the field pretty well. And once they, their drive just got killed with that, that's what slowed them down. It wasn't their inability to gain yards. And first and 10 from the 50. And Busanich with the pass and looks to be about a five-yard gain. And the pass again complete to Rizzatello. 
We're seeing a lot of Rizzatello early in the game. So, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but look at their left tackle of, of Faravis and tell me he's not one of the biggest guys you've ever seen in your life. I was actually thinking the exact <laughs> same thing. He's gigantic. And we have Busanich fakes the handoff and runs for a big gain down to the 32-yard line of Wayne Hills. He got rocked at the end of that play yeah. by Wayne Hills. <laughs> but I saw that. That was a big hit. I don't. I didn't see that big of a hole there, but Busanich got through that really quickly. He is really fast. I mean, I, I we just saw the Paramus, um offense just quickly move up, and they made some great downfield progress. Wayne Hills is going to need to stop that run game if they want to win this game, football game. I mean, the, you know, this 3-0 lead is is really nothing yet. It's early, but Paramus is driving on the Hills 32. Busanich hand up to Durante. And they just can't tackle him. That looks to be another six-yard gain. You know, Durante is a big kid. I mean, uh, 5'10", 200 pounds, but yeah. nothing the Wayne Hills de defense has ever, um, it, it, nothing they're not I mean, used they to. They stop bigger kids. Yeah. But like we said, the offensive line is huge and looks to be creating these pretty big holes. Well, part of the reason could be good coaching by Paramus because they came out their first drive throwing the ball in almost every play, doing a quarterback sneaks. And now that they're actually using their bigger and probably stronger running backs, it just throws the Wayne Hills defense off guard. Usanich handoff this time, and this one goes nowhere. And this handoff went to Tyler Gargillo, the senior wide receiver and running back. And that one went nowhere, stopped right to the line of scrimmage. So that one is third and seven. From the from the 29-yard line, this is a big third down. So they're just on the verge of field goal range right now. Third and seven, and Hills look like they're blitzing. Snap to Busanich, and that one is is that, is that caught? caught? <laughs> we can't see the referee signal. And that one is caught. Oh my God! By Joe Rizzatello again. Like I said, he's going to be a key player for the Paramus offense. Wayne Hills needs to keep their eye on him. If they want their defense to make any more big plays, like Monahan did, they're really going to have to keep their eye on that pass play. That was a fantastic catch by Rizzatello. Well, Paramus could score its first points in the first quarter this season on this drive. They have great field first position right now. From the 19 and. Durante goes nowhere on that one. Maybe a gain of one. You think we're going to see uh, uh, the first points against the Wayne Hills defense here, Alex? Well, second and ten from the 19. Prams is driving. They've been look. They've been looking pretty good on this drive. If Hill stops them, you know it's about a 36-yard field goal from here. That's not. I mean, that's not a guarantee in high school and college in the NFL. We haven't seen Lucas Dejanovic, who is the kicker for Paramus. But I certainly hope that you'll put up points. And there goes a handoff to Durante again. And this one goes for about five yards this time, maybe six. Nice. Oh, wow. I thought uh, Durante got a lot farther than he actually did, so that's actually 39 from the 18 as time is expiring in this quarter. This could be the last play of the quarter. 39, it's a big one. Busanich and shotgun. And looks to be a missed tackle there by the defensive back. I mean, they are in field goal range, so. Absolutely. The pass was complete. To not get it off. number, looks like 24, and that gives them about fourth down and three. But before they can kick a field goal or go for it, that is the end of the first quarter. At the end of the first quarter, it is three nothing Wayne Hills. A good a good start to the game, I gotta say. The defense is looking a bit eh, but we'll be, we'll be back with more of the game after this break. Corner with three minutes to go. 
She gets it to Giametta. Giametta corrals it, puts a shot on net. Deflected into the net. A goal by Brittany Galone. And Wayne Hills wins the North One Group 3 State Championship. Oh, baby, call your brains. Call your brains. Wayne Hills State Champions, baby. Couldn't script it any better, Joe. Couldn't script it any better myself. What a shot by Brittany Galone off the deflection from Jacqueline Giametta and Wayne Hills wins the North One Group 3 State Championship in dramatic fashion. And we're back at the start of the second quarter. It's 3 0 Wayne Hills as Pramis is lining up for a field goal. And that is a shank. Way Washington. off, way off. It so didn't even look like Wayne Hills had that great pressure. The kid just missed it. Senior <laughs> Lukas Stajanovic on the field goal miss right there, meeting Hills' shutout record or, uh, is still intact. And as of right now, Paramus has still not scored any points in the first quarter. So Hills is going to get the ball from their own 20. Hopefully that's the closest this Paramus offense comes to scoring. I'm sure Coach Olsen has some choice words to say in between quarters. Yeah. And I think the defense will certainly step it up, you know, the rest of this game. We saw a decent amount of passing in the first drive, so that started on the uh, opponent's 32. We'll see, starting from their own 20. Hand off to Monahan on the end around. Looks like Monahan a flag weaving too. between tackles. And Monahan could go. Wow. Monahan down to the 37 yard line. That was a Paramus great run. That was a great in run. And out of tackles. Josh, you said you saw a flag. I'm not sure. Uh, I definitely saw a flag, but. There is a flag. There down. is a flag. You were right. I don't see any yellow on the field except for, you know, one guy. But, uh, it was not an illusion. <laughs> This one looks to be coming back. Oh, God. Which is really unfortunate. Most likely a hold. Tom, back to what you were saying. These penalties are really going to kill the Wayne Hills offense. Obviously, that was a legal shift against the Patriots, nullifying a 43-yard run uh. by Andrew Monaghan on the end around. Well, a very similar play <laughs> happened against Wayne Valley. I would think it was a huge gain for Monaghan going up 40, 50 yards, getting taken back by a holding penalty that time. That you know, That's so disheartening. Monaghan really... Once again, stepping up big with the big play. Well, in between tackles, broke tackles, 43-yard gain nullified. And this one faked the end around to Monaghan this time. Not nearly as much of a game. <laughs> and go up the middle this time to looks to be the Justin Dom Santoro, excuse me, on the gain of just about two. So it's going to be a s what is that? Gain about three. So second and 12, second and 11 from the 19. Hopefully Wayne Hills can bounce back from that penalty. <laughs> hey, I want to see Monahan perform like that all game. <laughs> Passing on second down. Olsen out to number 25, Mike Garino, for a big first down. And looks to be about a 15-yard gain. You know, I really like to see these, these, um, these short passes that go for first downs. This is what Olsen's going to have to do to keep the ball moving. And this is going to be key to winning this game tonight. So first down and 10 from the 32 after that big first down. Olsen's super two tonight. Looking, he's looking pretty good. And he's passing again. This one almost picked off. Thrown behind number 22, Eric Moskal. So, you know, just as I say that, he throws an incompletion. And a pretty poor looking pass right there. You know, keep in mind, it's also cold out here tonight. And it's not going to be as easy to control the ball. But uh, thus far, he's, he's looking pretty good throwing the football tonight. It's one of those things, you know, the, the heat or the cold weather that he got used to or got, you know, thrown into last season. And he should be getting more used to it this season. But it was his first thing to tonight. So we'll, we'll give him a break on this one, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and hands off here. And this is going to be a big gain. Santoro, I believe. Santoro again with the handoff. I thought we'd see a lot more Justin Beveridge, but Santoro there, bounce to the outside, and trucks the guy as he goes out of bounds with the big gain of about 25 yards. Well, that was a beautiful run. It didn't look like he, he slowed down or lost momentum at all until he finally got tackled at the end of the play. 
And I don't know who it was in the backfield, but the fullback on that play was huge. It may have been Joey Lane, but he made a key block on that play that allowed Santoro to gain about 25 yards. Once again, going to show uh, the Wayne Hills running backs picking up the slack for the loss of Troy. This one goes to the fullback. Who looks to be Santoro again. And it is, and Santoro gains about four on the play, so it'll be second and six. From the second and seven from about the 42 yard line of Paramus. Despite the nullification of Monaghan's run, Hills is still driving. You know, Santoro's a kid that will not only be able to pound the ball through the hole, but he'll also, he, he's a really fast kid and he can go for those big runs. Play action pass out to Monaghan. Monaghan breaks the tackle. Jukes. Monaghan cut back inside and he breaks this tackle. He could go. Touchdown, Andrew Monaghan. What an wow. amazing run. That was. <laughs> Just gets inside the pylon, Andrew Monaghan. Got to be the MVP of the team so far. Absolutely fantastic run that play on the screen wow. pass. Weaving in between and out of tackles, cutting back across the field for that 42 yard touchdown. I think I counted at least <laughs> five broken tackles and at least three very stylish juke moves Gosh, there. I wish they could see our faces. We are astounded. That was a fantastic run. I was out of my seat, Alex. <laughs> well, there's two, <laughs> maybe three times he regained momentum and just beat all the defenders. Where would this team be without him? He is the playmaker of this team. And the extra point by Eric Martinez is straight through the uprights. And just like that, it's a 10 nothing Wayne Hills game. That, you know, making big runs like that comes down to being able to react in the heat of the moment. Andrew Monaghan seeing where the players are coming at him from all sides, following his block blockers, moving his feet. That is a perfect run. It was second and seven. I like the play action call. I think that deep some of the defenders, but that was Andrew Monaghan. That was his touchdown. He juked, he probably broke four or five tackles on that play. Switch fields and outran everybody. What an amazing touchdown by Andrew Monaghan. What a player. Once again, Alex putting the team on his back. This is what I love to see from Andrew Monaghan. I remember our freshman year that he was, he was a quarterback in eighth grade, and you know, we already had quarterbacks, and we were like, what was he gonna do? And I think he's found his niche on the team. Definitely. That is his, <laughs> he's in a double digit touchdown in the season, and this is just the fourth, no, fifth game of the season, excuse me, for Wayne Hills. He's having an absolutely amazing year. <laughs> I'm electrified. <laughs> wow. I'm excited to see more things from Andrew Monahan in this game. Oh, absolutely. Not just this game, but this whole season. It's right, Eric Martinez right. lining up for the kickoff again. Line drive kick, deep kick to the six yard line. Caught by Rizzit, or Gargillo. Oh, looks like a little hitting going on in the middle. Gargiulo out to the 27 yard line on the return. About a return of 22 yards, a pretty decent return and pretty decent field position for the Spartans. See, that, that big run from Andrew Monin isn't just a score. That's something that's going to really electrify the entire Wayne House football team. It's going to get them going and just completely build momentum for the rest of the game. So Monaghan has an interception, an amazing touchdown, and a nullified beautiful run. Having a fantastic game so far, 15 minutes into this game. And that looks to be a timeout by Paramus, their first one. So with 9.25 left in the second quarter, the 3-0 lead that Wayne Hills had is now extended to 10-0. And the offense looks pretty good tonight, guys. What do you guys, you know, what do you guys think about this? Well, I think the Wayne Hills offense has really been clicking so far. Surely got stopped on the goal line of Paramus that first drive, but they could have easily went down two football field lengths on that second drive. They just look like they're unstoppable right now. You know, what I mentioned in the pregame with the key factor is, and it's, it's definitely been proven so far, the Wayne Hills offense is moving the ball. They're making the plays, they're running the ball, they're passing the ball, they're moving the ball up the field, making all these drives successful. We talked about the importance of the offensive line clearing holes for the run. And yes, they've done that, but I think Hills has really relied more on the passing game. Olsen's having a fantastic game. I believe he's three for four right now. The offense looks good. Let's see how the defense responds after last drive's decent performance. 
First and 10 for Brown from their 27 yard line. Shotgun snap to Bissanich. This is a deep pass. And it's in and out of the hands of number seven, Brandon Sebehi, the six foot sophomore running back. Well, Mike of Carino. Is just out of the hands. I'm sorry, time to cut you off. Well, Mike Carino right there. Great coverage for Wayne Hills. He was right on the tail of Paramus, and that had to throw him off even slightly to make him miss the catch. You know, that was a great throw by Busanis. He really put that ball where it had to be. Absolutely perfect pass. You could not make a better pass than that if you're Mike Busanis. Busanis with the man on the backfield. And handoff to Chris Durante, and Durante gains about maybe three yards on that one, so it's going to be Third and seven from about the 30, 31 yard line of Wayne Hills. About third and four, third and five from the 33 yard line. This is another big third down. Ooh, almost picked. And Busanich's pass there is tipped and fallen incomplete. Busanich took a big hit there. That Busanich's pass was broken up by Nick Tusiko. It was intended for six foot one tight end Josh Rollins. That's a big target, but Tusiko made a nice play on that ball. And it is fourth and four, and Paramus is going to punch. Well, keep an eye on my, oh, sorry, Tom. Sorry about that. Nick DeSico, that's the third or fourth time I've heard his name called. He's been very involved in the Wayne Hills defensive game. You will not meet a kid with bigger heart than Nick DeSico. Not at all. Monaghan back on the return. Monaghan finds the hole. Finding more holes. Running, oh my God. <laughs> running to the outside. Monaghan. He just faster than everybody. And Monaghan out of the past 35 yard line of Paramus. Yeah, I think Monaghan definitely sees the significance of following your blockers. He's cutting, cutting back and forth, finding the holes, getting behind the big guys. He is having a great game tonight. He loves reversing fields. We saw it there, starting on the right side of the field. Gets taken out of bounds on the left side after a big return there. And for the second out of three drives, Monaghan has led his team you know, to start on the drive on the premises uh, side of the field. This 10-0 lead could already be, they're almost in field, uh, field goal position already. First down oh, to 10, oh, and the ball no. comes out. And Paramus has it. That can't happen. And I'm not sure who fumbled that ball. And it looks to Beverage. be Justin Beveridge on the carry. And I don't think Beveridge ever got that ball cleanly. No, definitely because not. Because took one step and that ball just popped out. I don't think anyone touched it, it just popped out of his hand. And Tyler Gagilla, number 22, with the recovery. And just like that, it's like the Spartans got a new set of downs. I think we completely forgot to mention how detrimental these turnovers are going to be. A complete change in momentum going from that big run from Monaghan, and now they don't even have the ball anymore. Hope. First down to 10, handoff. Uh, oh, no. To Durante, and Durante, that is a huge gain. I'm sorry. I, that, that was Musanich on the carry. Yeah. Michael Urban, number 33, right, right, right. all the numbers run together. <laughs> Senior running back, 5'9", 180, and he carried a few players on his back right there, broke a few tackles. That was a big run. That went for about 20 yards to the Patriots, 48. The turnovers are a killer, not only you know to the drive, but also emotionally. Wayne House has to put that in, in the past. They need to bounce back from that, from that turnover. From the 48, this one goes back to Urban, and Urban gets stopped. At the line of scrimmage, maybe a loss of a yard. So second and 10, or second and 11 from about the 48 of Wayne Hills for Paramus. And big junior Nicolizia on the tackle. And I think we've said it before, I see Nicolizia in school sometimes, <laughs> and my God, he is the scariest person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> I am intimidated just looking at him. I can't imagine how players are intimidated on the field with that big uh, body. He's definitely a force to be reckoned with in the Wayne Hills defense. 
Kusanich with the handoff there, and once again, right into the line, and that goes nowhere. And it's going to be third and 10 from the 48. And Durant number 34 on the carry goes nowhere. So after that one big play by Urban, two, there have been two games of nothing. And just like that, it's third and 10. But from the 48 yard line of Wayne Hills. Well, I have to say, I do like the fight of Paramus. They don't give up like other teams do when they're down 10 nothing against Wayne Hills and they're on the road. Paramus still looks like they're fighting and trying to win this game. Paramus is a good team. Snap there, shotgun. Busanich to Urban, and Urban's gonna get stopped just before the first down marker. Gain of about eight there, and it's gonna be a fourth and a one from the 39-yard line of Wayne Hills. Paramus is I don't, the open man. Like. Sorry, I don't think Paramus is in field goal range, but I don't know whether you want to punt it here if you're Paramus. Fourth and inches, it looks to be, for Paramus. And it looks to me like they're going to go for it. They're going for it. They've got time, too. Over five minutes left in the quarter. Hill stacks the box. They got it. And Paramus gets the first down with the quick handoff. Like, likely to Durante, and it is to Durante with a two-yard gain. And that'll put the ball on. There's a flag. <laughs> and that's going to be a defensive penalty against Wayne Hills. Flag on the play, that's going to move the chains even further after the first down. It looked like the flag was tossed after the play. And I believe it was an extra man on the huddle penalty. I don't recall ever seeing that before. But well, I, that's a 15-yard penalty. Well, remember, Coach Olsen, we think he called two timeouts before about his personnel not being correct. This could be something that they need to get straightened out by the end of this game. So not only does Paramus get the crucial first down on fourth and one, they get an extra 15 yards uh, uh, to the 22 of Wayne Hills. First and 10 for Paramus. Kusanich with the handoff to Urban, and Urban gains about five on the play. It was a nice second effort there by Urban. Looked like he was stopped yeah. by the first defender, kept his feet moving, and gained two or three extra yards. Absolute fantastic point. I thought he was going to get one there. Kept his legs moving, got five. Dom Santoro on the tackle. He's having a pretty good game, too. Going back to the penalty, I saw um, Cole Jolson talking to uh, the referee, and it looked like there was some misunderstanding going on. Um, I, maybe they maybe really didn't deserve the penalty there, but it's going to hurt the Wayne Hills deep. Second and eight, handoff to Ben. And there's a fumble. Durante got the handoff, put the ball on the ground, and just like that, it's Wayne Hill's ball. Nick DeSico picking up that fumble right there. That is big. Nick DeSico is a big factor in this Wayne Hill's defense. Like you said before, the kid has a huge heart. He is one of the most driven kids out there on the football field. He's one of the most genuine kids I know, one of the nicest kids I know. Random fact, he loves Dr. Seuss. <laughs> he does. Nick's a great kid. And a fantastic play there, recovering the fumble. And this game seems to be going pretty back and forth between you know penalties, turnovers, and it's first and ten from for Hills on their own 30-yard line. I'm expecting a lot of Monahan on this drive. I don't know about you guys. And toss there. And this one goes for about four, five yards. Solid. On the toss to Christian Rodriguez. It seems like Rodriguez has been getting more and more involved in the last few games for Wayne Hills. He's a big kid and can also can often plug those holes and find open space. He's five nine, not the tallest kid, but 188 pounds of pure muscle. You know, just making an observation of the the Wayne Hills football team, I, I noticed that a lot of what happens is based upon single big plays. It's not really the general ability to stop the offense or you know, to um, keep the ball going. It's usually a few huge plays that are, usually, that are spread out over different periods of time. And on second and five there, Rodriguez runs for about a 10-yard gain and a first down. 
Never actually went down, had three guys on him, but uh, like I said, his pure muscle didn't go down, just got stopped. On his first and 10 from their own 45 yard line. They're making nice progress in this drive. And another handoff to Rodriguez gains about five again on the drive. Battle with the ball in midfield. Rodriguez having a pretty good drive. We hadn't seen him much before this drive, but he's here now. Josh, I know on our, on our weekly talk show, we talk about how Dwayne Hill is running back. It's not just one guy, it's such a, it's a core of three or four players, Beveridge, Santoro, Rodriguez, Zafina when he gets healthy. And that works so much better, in my opinion, than a one-man guy. I mean, no one's gonna replace Brian Dowling, one of the best runners in the history of Wayne Hills. But this three-man, four-man run, running attack is pretty good, too. Wayne Hills has a great deal of versatility in their backfield, more specifically their running backs. They've got the guy for the long runs. They've got the guy to plunge the ball up the middle. They've got it all in their backfield. And with 2.29 left in the second quarter, Wayne Hills calls their final timeout. Well, back to the topic of running backs. Christian Rodriguez, he's only a junior. He'll be back next year, probably being the focus of the running game. Definitely. And also their sophomore, Van Peenen, who we've seen late in games when it's off, off in a blowout, we've seen him just clobber opposing defenses, gaining huge, getting huge yards on all of his carries. Thinking a committee between him and Rodriguez would be would be deadly for other teams. Hills is going to be a great team next year. They're losing, you know, Monahan, Beveridge, Zafino, but Olsen's going to be back and bigger than ever, more experienced than ever. Like you said, they're going to have Rodriguez and a few other running backs, some wide receivers. Moscow's coming back, and they're always a dangerous team. They always have tons of depth. So second and five from the 50 for Wayne Hills. Olsen going deep, thrown yeah. into triple coverage, and that one is lucky to fall incomplete. Looked to me like number seven, Brandon Sebae, he had that one, but that one fell incomplete. You know, back to the uh, future of the Hills football team, Wayne Hills is far from a, a senior uh, team. They've got a lot of the younger guys that definitely have the ability to step up and really have a great performance on the football field. This team is going to be great in years to come. So we saw Sebehi there almost get the interception, but he has a knack for dropping balls. He dropped one on offense and uh, missed the interception right there. So third and five for Wayne Hills. Olsen and Shaka looking to pass. Passing on the run and a beautiful pass. Caught by Monahan. And Monahan down to the 33 yard line. On the big first down. 17-yard gain, Andrew Monahan again, and beautiful pass from Kevin Olsen on the run. Great pass. You know, Monahan continues to impress. He not only makes the catch, he gets the extra yard, and he does it all. He definitely does it all. He's listed at six foot 185. I don't know if he's that big, but I mean, there is no better player on the field than him right now. Olsen in the shotgun again, looking for an open man, and. Oh. Throwing off his back foot because there was some pressure on Olsen and that one falls incomplete. You know, you had to get the ball off. That, yeah. that could have been a very big loss of yardage. And I don't know whether there was a miscommunication on the offensive line, but one guy for Paramus got through and got in Kevin's face and forced a bad pass right there. And you know what? We usually don't see that very often. I th Kevin is very rarely sacked. The offensive line does a great job of keeping him covered and allowing him to have a lot of time in the pocket. Well, that pass was to Jeff Gignac, who is absolutely gigantic. <laughs> I believe he's 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 and he'd be a great target in the red zone. Yeah, Absolutely. 6'5", 198. He's a big kid. <laughs> Second and 10 from the 33 for Hills. Olsen again throws this one up for Monaghan. Oh! Oh! It's tipped and caught. Monaghan, what a touchdown. Play. Oh, my gosh. Andrew That's two, Monahan. Alex. That is two. Wow. Andrew Monahan. Wow. And the defender tipped that one. And Monahan with fantastic coordination. Catch that one out of midair and runs wow. it seven, eight yards into the end zone for his second touchdown of the night. And just like that, it is 16 nothing. Well, what hand eye coordination <laughs> wow. right there. That's all hand eye coordination. The ball tipped, able to readjust with the ball midair. 
That's wow, great play. If someone were to tell me Andrew Monahan was a superhuman, I would believe it. He is doing it all tonight. <laughs> that is just that is just a, another play that is just pure focus. He zoned it on the ball, saw it tipped out of the defender's hand, and he made it happen. That was huge. The extra point is good by Eric Martinez. So it was 17 nothing with 148 left in this second half, and. You know, as announcers, there aren't really many times where, you know, we become speechless watching the game, but Andrew Monahan leaves me speechless half the you time know, he touches the ball. It's tough not to go wild with, 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 with the mics uh, on our heads, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Andrew Monahan, what an absolutely fantastic catch. Not to be a Debbie Downer, but that was not a good pass by Kevin Olsen. Nope. Monahan made up for it with the absolutely amazing play, but that easily could have been picked off. If Monahan was playing defensive back, we know that pass would not have gone to the wide receiver. That that would have been an that would have been an interception. Once again, it, it, football is not a one-person sport. Although it is looking like it with Monahan scoring yeah. the two touchdowns tonight. But uh, t talking more specifically about pass plays, the quarterback could throw completely off a pass, but the the wide receiver can make up for it. It's it's a two-way thing. Absolutely. So we saw Kevin Olsen start off playing the game pretty well. He's still making the uh, occasional good pass, but we've, two of his past three, pa uh, past three passes have been you know, incomplete or off his back foot, so that's something to be concerned about. But with the team of 17 and nothing, I'm not sweating that much. So, number 15, Eric Martinez, lining up for his fourth kick of the night. Getting a lot of practice out here. Absolutely, sophomore, but a beautiful kick that time. After about the eight yard line. And Arguello on the return out to just about the 20 yard line. He stopped his feet at the 20 and I guess wanted to reverse field and was taken down immediately. Didn't work out. Not at all. Especially not against the Wayne Hills defense. Number 12, Preston, Preston Quinn on the tackle. Uh, Mike Quinn, famous, uh, not famous quarterback, but a uh, <laughs> fantastic quarterback at Wayne Hills in the past. It's, that's his brother. Well, right now, Paramus only has a minute and 43 seconds left on the clock to make it about 80 yards. It's going to be a, a tough task. We do have two timeouts. As oh, no. And oh, no. With the handoff to Durante. I'm sorry. With the handoff to Michael Urban. And Urban has had two gigantic runs. And look at number 70, that offensive lineman down there. Six foot four, Brandon Manasalves. <laughs> and my God, he is gigantic. You know, I was going to say before the play that you can't really doubt this Paramus offense. So we've seen them move the ball up the field. They have had some almost successful drives, but only because this Wayne Hills defense is doing a great job tonight. But first and 10, and Busanich is in shotgun from Hills 47. And almost intercepted, knocked incomplete. Busanich is <laughs> doing a great job throwing the ball. But, you know, the receivers are not compensating for it. Uh, his, some of his passes are putting me on the edge of my seat because, oh, they're just so close. Second and 10 from Hills is 47 with a minute 29 left in the first half. Paramus has two timeouts left. And Beveridge, Justin Beveridge almost intercepted that one. Busanich in the shotgun again, looking to pass. Hills is not getting a lot of pressure, and that pass looked to be tipped. By Nick DeSico. And DeSico's having a fantastic game. I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> and it's going to be third and ten from the 47, you were saying? Well, I don't know. I just think Wayne Hills is playing pretty deep right now, not looking to give up a big play to Paramus. I think they'll be content giving up a field goal. I know it's not good to give up points. But they definitely do not want Paramus to have any momentum going into halftime. That pass was intended for number 80, Josh Rollins, and that was his second, the second time he was targeted today. The first time was knocked down by Nick DeSico. The second time, knocked down by Nick DeSico. Third and ten for Paramus. Little pass out, and there are six guys from Wayne Hills right on that receiver. And that one is caught by number 80, Josh Rollins. And that is not going to get the first down as the clock is ticking. Roberto Alvarez, a lineman, on the tackle. And it's going to be a fourth and what fourth and four. I am genuinely genuinely excited to see Andrew Monahan to see what Andrew Monahan's gonna do on this one. Hills has no timeouts left. Hills has no timeouts left. 
there are 48 seconds. And Paramus is going to let the play clock run down before they punt this ball to Andrew Monahan, knowing how dangerous he is. And Paramus is going to call a timeout with 36.6 seconds left in the second quarter. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm sort of shaking. I'm so excited to see Monahan <laughs> showing this ball. Yeah, I definitely he want is, to see something happen. When you see electrifying... In the dictionary, there is a picture of Andrew Monahan. <laughs> I think that is the best way to describe him. Yeah, he's definitely the catalyst of this football team right now. You know, so far this season, he's been the catalyst, and he's definitely the MVP of, of the first five games of this season for Wayne Hills. I know everyone in Wayne Hills was concerned about how the team would fare after Troy Zafina went down with the injury in the first game to Hackensack, you know, tore his ACL, his MCL. He'll have to be back in a week or two, but. Monahan, senior captain, has stepped it up exponentially. He is the MVP. He has 13 or something touchdowns, which is ridiculous because it's the fifth game of the season. So he, like you said, Josh, he's putting the team on his back and look for a hopefully fantastic return on this one as well. Well, if I was Paramus, maybe you kick this one out of bounds? Uh, I think so. Good call, actually, Tom. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. And it uh, looks at to be what Paramus is doing, and... Very good call. And it does go out of bounds, out about the 14-yard line of Wayne Hills. And we don't see it very often from Coach Olsen, but with no timeouts left from your own 14-yard line and, and 29.6 seconds, I would not be surprised to see Wayne Hills take a knee here and go to the locker room. And keep in mind, they are receiving the ball after the half. Very true. So I don't think Paramus really expects... Uh, much in 29.6 seconds. First and 10 from the 15 for Hills. And uh, they're in the huddle, but I guess they're going to try one or two big plays. First and 10 from the 15. And the handoff to Whoa. and a hurdle. <laughs> this one goes to I'm not sure who that is. Number six, is that Michelle? That's Christian Rodriguez. Oh, you're right. That's Rodriguez. That was a, that was a great run. That was a fantastic run. Hurdle bouncing in between and out of tackles. Hurry up. They're going to see how much yards they can well, get down the field. Right I, don't, I don't know if they can actually call the play before the, the flags move, but. Oh, they want to move right the ball. There. They're getting yeah. out of bounds. Monahan with a you know, six yard gain right there. 12.9 seconds left. You know, I really love this quick football. I love when the Wayne House football team can control the pace of the game. This is, this is fun to watch. But well, what do you think? Two, two, two big throws after this? Like one big throw, maybe an incomplete. Still have time on the clock and go for one more. Let's see what happens. Second and four for Wayne Hills from their own 39. Olsen looking, looking to go pass. deep. Looking for the Hail Mary. Oh Not yeah. quite. Monahan needs to get out of bounds. And he does with five seconds left at the Paramus 42. So it looks like they're not in field goal range yet, despite Eric Martinez's great leg. So it looks like they're going to have likely one shot, maybe two, but likely one shot at the end zone. I'm a huge fan of this Monahan Olsen relationship going <laughs> on right here. They are a great um, couple, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the bromance. <laughs> uh, Tom, you said it earlier. I think they should look for Jeff Jiniak in this situation. He's six foot five. He can he can jump too. And he's fast. And Kevin Appreciate throws this that. one up. And that's nah. gonna fall incomplete. And that is going to end the half. A good first half from Wayne Hills. 17 0 uh, lead for Wayne Hills. And they are going to receive the ball as the second half starts. Guys, before we go to break, let's hear one thought about the first half. You know, Alex, this is a great game. This is fun to watch. This is fun to announce. And I love being here right now. Andrew Monahan is doing a great job of keeping this football team motivated. They are completely on their toes. This lead is going to keep going. I just, I'm happy to see that Wayne Hills is playing within themselves. They aren't trying to do anything spectacular. They're just doing what they do best, which is win. Guys, I completely agree. 17 nothing. Wayne Hills at halftime. We'll be back with the second half. After this. Uh, 
wide receiver set a linebacker pass. Throws a ball. And it's going to be intercepted by Roddy Drees. Drees has a king walk into the end zone. And Drees brings it in for the touchdown. What a turn of events, folks.
Wayne Hill's coming out on top. And we're back at Patriot Stadium with the start of the second half. Wayne Hills is leading Paramus 17 to nothing and is going to receive the ball when the half starts. I'm here with two new colleagues, Nick Appaluccio and Nick Croce. Guys, great to have you here. Great to be here, Alex. Great to be here. So you guys are here for the first half, so you saw some of Monaghan's and the team's amazing plays, but especially Andrew Monaghan had an amazing first half. 
punt returns, running the ball, oh, well, it's nullified, but running the ball, his catch on the tip for a touchdown. My, he's my key player of the game, and he has been absolutely fantastic so far. Does not disappoint. What do you guys think he and the team will do in the second half? Really, you can only expect this if you've been following Wayne Hills all season. Andrew Monahan, pretty much with at least two touchdowns in every game. He's been carrying this team ever since Troy Zafino's injury in the first first game of the season. So I only expect great things from him for the rest of the year. Uh, I expect the same, especially uh, the second to last play during the second quarter. Uh, the Pere Perevis has been losing some defense on him. He's been running ahead, catching the ball, and I expect the same for the next two quarters. We've... Uh We've seen like a balanced mix on the offense between running and passing. Kevin's looked pretty good when he passed. He's had a few passes off his back foot. He got lucky on the Monaghan touchdown. Uh, but for the most part, he's been playing really well. And I hope that he continues that in the second half. I, I think he will. The play that really sticks out to me, I don't know if you saw this, but the Jeff Gignac play, it seemed like he just kept running. He could have caught it, and Kevin got hit as he threw it, and he was able to fit it right where he had to, but Gignac just couldn't come up with it. Uh, that's right. I personally expect the same to go. I, it's nice to see Hills for a couple of games go a high number against no score against the other team. Uh, 42 to nothing, I think, the first game, and I guess they're trying to continue the streak now. Well, Hills has posted three consecutive shutouts in which they've outscored their opponents 100 and like 17 to nothing. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and right now it's 17 to nothing against Paramus, so I said in the game that I expected a 28 nothing game. And you know, I'm near the mark right now. 28 that doesn't seem that likely that would be 11 points. But the defense has been playing, you know, the defense has been playing decently. They've been making the stops when they had to, but they have been giving up big plays. So it's not what we expected, I don't, I don't think, from the Wayne Hills defense. The line. What coming into this year was supposed to be the big thing, and I really haven't seen what I've expected from them as of this year so far. Uh, neither have I, but like you said, I think you're pretty spot on as far as uh, 28 goes. It is 11 points, but I, I feel they could make it. Uh, I'd like to see, you know, Wayne Hill's defense, you know, step up. Monaghan obviously had the big interception on the first Pramus drive, but since then they've allowed some big runs, and Pramus has been, you know, in their half of the field on a lot of their drives. Haven't gotten past, you know, the 35 very often, but I, I like to see the defense, you know, stop them a bit quicker in the second half. As Paramus begins to line up for the second half kickoff, senior Luka Stojanovic is the kicker. He shanked a field goal already today, but his kickoffs have been very good. He punted away from Andrew Monaghan the last time we saw him kick. I don't blame him. And going back is the electrifying Andrew Monaghan to return the punt. With the injuries to Zafino and Schiller, you really get to see Monaghan shine in the receiving because before it used to be, he used to have two deep. You'd have Schiller and Andrew, and before Troy got injured in the first game, you'd have Troy and Andrew back there. But now, Andrew's the lone guy back there, and he's going to make all the plays on kickoffs. Absolutely. And the second half has begun. And a short kickoff from Stojanovic. Monaghan catches at the 17. And uh, <laughs> Monaghan just <laughs> carrying the pile. It's like eight guys. Took about eight guys to bring Monaghan down from the 24 to now the 39-yard line of Wayne Hills. And that's good field position. Andrew Monaghan is really stepping up his game this season. I'm incredibly impressed. When you're given that captain mark, you know you have to show that you deserve it. And he's surely done that this season. That's true. Monaghan just did not want to go down. Uh, even with the eight, nine guys on him, that was pretty, pretty nice play. Absolutely. So... Wayne Hills was already with a 17-0 lead, a nice cushion, driving again, starting at their own 40-yard line. I want to see some play action here. I don't know about you guys. I love seeing a game where they throw it, and really to get to get Kevin, you have Kevin as your quarterback, why not throw it? Absolutely. But they're going to go with the handoff on first down, and that one goes for a gain of about two before the running back is pushed back. And that is Justin, Justin Beveridge, Beveridge on the carry. Cal now, Alex, sorry. I wasn't sorry. So I wasn't. I haven't been like paying super close attention in the first half. But what's been the running back situation in this game? I was about to get into that actually. Uh, we we've seen uh, switching between Beveridge, Santoro, and Rodriguez uh, mostly. Uh, Beveridge had a fumble, 
after you know after a big punt return, he gave the ball back to Paramus, and we haven't seen him get that many touches since then. Uh, Santoro had a big run, and Rodriguez had some big runs. So I think it's those two, and then Beverage. But Beverage is in right now. But Olsen's passing on second and eight, and off his back foot, and that one is incomplete. And there was some pressure there by the Paramus defense. And the pass was intended for number 22, Eric Moskal. And just, you know, baffling around before Moskal could catch it. Nice effort nonetheless. Yeah, definitely. Olsen was getting rushed there. He had to get rid of it. So, at least not an interception. Absolutely. With that, it's 38 from the 42-yard line of Wayne Hills. Olsen looking to pass again. And the dump out. And that's going to be a big gain. And I think that's Christian Rodriguez, and he is gone. All right, that's Eric Moskal. Nick, who is it? Dom Santoro, and number Dom 21. Santoro. The numbers went up with the jersey. Nick, just say it. <laughs> Possibly the, wow, the, it was fast. the <laughs> fastest open field play I've ever seen. He that just was exploded amazing. right through the hole. I'm going to say it's my excuse there. When someone's running that fast, you can't see their numbers. But uh, <laughs> pretty valid point right there. <laughs> I can accept that as an excuse. <laughs> I was wrong twice, but Nick, I'm glad you're here with me. And Martinez, his third extra point of the night, is straight through. And with that, a 24 nothing Wayne Hills. That drive took a minute and 18 seconds. And man, Dom Santoro is fast. I have not seen that from him in years. Definitely. I mean, there was questions on who was going to be the big running back coming in this year, and. We're going to see all of them are getting playing time, as you mentioned before, and there Santoro was able to get the touchdown. We talked about the trio of running backs they have, Santoro, Beveridge, and uh, Rodriguez, and we saw we saw, Bev, we saw Santoro right there for the touchdown. So they're utilizing everybody. And Kevin made a nice pass there. Yeah, Kevin was getting rushed there. He definitely got rid of it the right way. That, they had that dump out for a reason, and it worked. <laughs> Dom, you know, caught it, maybe juked out one or two defenders, but he was gone. Talk about like afterburners, like that was right there, you saw it. <laughs> like a second gear. <laughs> now, what about this sophomore, Eric Martinez, taking the kicks for Hills? He's done a great job this season so far. Well, at 6 foot 200 pounds, he does not really seem like the conventional kicker. Um, but I believe he's also a linebacker and tight end. Just a sophomore, he's getting valuable kicking experience with the amount of points Wayne Hill scores, the amount of extra points he has to kick. And he's been doing a fantastic job, really pinning uh, Pitting for is pretty deep in their own uh, territory. Next year, we should definitely see him get some time as linebacker and tight end. We Absolutely. won't be here, but Nick Croce will be here, our <laughs> other announcer. <laughs> and there's a big return, but some flags, but a big return after that 35 Gargiulo by Tyler return. Gargiulo. A 27-yard return, but I think this is coming back. Oh, no, it's against, against Wade Hills, a face mask against Wade Hills, and that is going to be 15 extra yards for Paramus. Penalties is a big thing for Wayne Hills this season. Even though they've been blowing out their opponents in the close games, they're going to start killing them. And we've seen Wayne Hills and Paramus switch off penalties and turnovers tonight. And penalties have been drive killers. And this one could be a drive starter Personal for Paramus. Definitely something Paramus needs to get their score started as they have no points on the board so far. Seems very likely. First and 10 Spartans on their own 48 yard line. So first and 10 for the Paramus Spartans from their own 48. And Vesanich takes the snap and hands it off to. Uh, he got he got a uh, number twenty two number twenty two Tyler Gajulo. And Nick, you pointed out something. What happened? Well, Andrew Monahan playing safety. He was just hanging out in the backfield, getting ready for the tackle if he broke through. And number sixty four for Paramus just came in and blocked him out of nowhere after the play was over. So some words exchanged there by Andrew and number sixty four for the yeah. When your team is down twenty four nothing, there have to be some you know, strong emotions going around. My hand's been the best player in the field this whole game. The second and two. And the handoff this time goes for a about you know two and a half yards, gets the first down, and that one went to Michael Urban who we've seen break off some big runs in the first half, gets his first carry in the second half. And it, just like that, it's first and 10 from the Wayne Hills 41-42 yard line. That'll be a 
not the not the Cowboys receiver, Michael Irvin, right? <laughs> Michael Urban. Ah, oh, okay. Lusanich under center. And hands this one off to Urban again. And Urban is taken down Number in the backfield for a loss of two. Michael Urban on the carry. Fantastic penetration by the defense there. We have not seen that a lot this game. Definitely a good show by the line there that showing that they should be the Stop line that they were supposed to be in the beginning of the season. Jason That's right, a great pushback. And Jason Avedisian, who is one of the leading tacklers on the team with that tackle there, the loss of two. So it's second and 12 for Paramus from Wayne Hills' 44-yard line. Bisanich in the shotgun with three out wide and two guys next to him. And play action. And he's going deep, and this one is way overthrown. By Bustanich, intended for Tyler Gargiulo, but that was overthrown by about 10 yards. Yeah, definitely. I, they should, they've been sticking to the run so far this game. It hasn't really gotten them anywhere, so maybe starting to air it out a little bit, they're gonna start to put some points on the board. And I said it before the half started, but it seems that every time Paramus gets into Wayne Hill's territory, they always get stopped somewhere near the 35, the 40. And just like now, and like right now, it's third and 12 from Hills' 44. So this is a big third down, you know, if Paramus wants to put some points on the board. And they need to put some points on the board if they want to have a chance of winning this game. Not even in field goal position at this range either. So nope. No chance of putting any points. Shock into Bissanich, and it's caught, and a great hit. And it's caught by the tight end, Josh Rollins. Very good hit there by Kyle Hunsinger, number 10 for Wayne Josh Rollins. That is Rollins' second catch. Of the day, and that is a big first down, a gain of about 14 yards, and a big hit there by Carl Hunsinger. But Rollins, 6'1, 200 pounds, stayed on his feet, persevered, got an extra yard or so. As we mentioned, it there looks like they're almost past that, that 35 40 yard mark, so maybe some points coming for Paramus on this drive. Lusanich under center on first and 10 from the Hills 29, and he hands it off to Chris Durante, and Durante gains about two. Number on the play. Chris Durante on the carry. That's going to be about second and eight from Hills' 27 yard line. So they're certainly in field goal range, but Nick their Lizzie kicker missed an easy, well, not, not easy because you know, no field goals are easy, but like a 20 uh, something yard field goal in the first half. A field goal further than yeah. this one. Missed it, by a, than this missed it by a long shot, so I don't know how confident Paramus is in its kicker at this point. And it's second and 10 from the 29. They've been running a lot of shotgun on this drive yeah. and it seems to be working for them. Bissanich in shotgun again, play action again. And Hills finally gets some pressure in there and they take down Bissanich for a big loss. And that is gonna be a, I don't know where they're gonna spot that ball, probably on about the 37 yard line. That's an eight yard loss. Is sacked by the Patriots. And third down and Third down at about 15 in the yard. So they had a third and 12 they converted on you know, about a minute ago. Third and 15 is a tough task, and I don't think Wayne Hills wants to see another first down after this. Definitely not, Alex. And they could pretty much be confident that Paramus is going to throw it on this one. So Bissanich and shotgun again. And it's, and it's intercepted. The screen pass is intercepted, and this one's going all the way back. And it's Dom Santoro again with the pick six. And Santoro came to play in the second half. So Santoro seems to be taking Andrew Monahan as Andrew Monahan's spot as the star player for this half. Really, with that great open field speed he has, and no match for Paramus. And just a beautiful interception there. He sticks his hands right in the receiver's arms, catches the ball, and takes it back. All the way, about 65 yards for the pick six. And it is 30 to nothing, Wayne Hills, with 6.49 left in the third quarter. This game's getting out of hand, guys. It does seem that Hills has been sticking too with their interception this game. Uh, Martinez's fourth extra point of the day is good, and it's 31 0 Wayne Hills. My score prediction 28 0 has been eclipsed. But the shutout's still intact. I said earlier you know, in the pregame and before the second half started that I wanted to see Hill's defense step up, you know, get some interceptions, get some points off turnovers, and they just did it right there. So with 6.49 left in the third quarter, it is 31-0 Wayne Hills, and we'll be right back after this.
Tell them we're ready. Turn my mic on. Turn my mic on. Is it on? Is it on? And with, and with 6.49 left, we are back with the Eric Martinez kickoff. Called by Tyler Bussan. It's about the eight yard line. He'll get out to the ground to 20, or excuse me, Tyler Jarjulo <laughs> on the uh, return out back to the 22 yard line. So guys, I got a recent score update for the all important American League Division Series playoffs. Game five, the Detroit Tigers have a two nothing lead over the New York Yankees in the top of the third inning. I know a lot of us in the crowd right now are Yankees fans. Myself not included, but uh, now, nonetheless. Now I'm curious, do you root for the Yankees in the playoffs or are you, are you against them? Are you uh, a true Met fan? <laughs> I, uh, I'm a true Met fan. I don't, I don't hate the Yankees, but I'm certainly not pulling for them in this series against the Tigers. So Busanich takes a shotgun snap. And looks like the direct snap actually went this time to number 33, Michael, number 33, Urban, Michael Urban, who gained about three or four yards. I could see Paramus trying to stay away from the pass as much as they can on this drive. Last time, <laughs> it seemed like they just ran that one shotgun play action play, and it ended up as an interception for Santoro. Absolutely. Now, to answer your question, I think I'm rooting for the Milwaukee Brewers this postseason. <laughs> so, Busanich under center on, looks to be second down and eight. And number 22, Gargiulo is, you know, running all around the backfield and gets tackled for a big loss. Back at about the 20 yard line. And it's going to be third and 13. I've only, After the loss of six. I've only been able to see two people run east to west and gain yards like that. Reggie Bush and, and as of this year, Andrew Monahan for Wayne Hill. <laughs> so it didn't really work out for Paramus there. And it is third and 14 for the Spartans from Wayne Hill's 20 yard line. Sorry, their own 20 yard line, excuse me. And Busanis took the snap there. There was some, you know, fakes right there, and the pass for number 21, Joseph uh, Rissello, is incomplete, tipped and incomplete. And just like that, the Spartans will have to punt. What I've noticed is every single pass play the Spartans do is play action, play action. And I really haven't seen any regular dropbacks from any regular shotgun formations. They've always had a play action in them. They use, they use shotgun a lot, Nick. I absolutely agree with you. And Monahan is back deep. We'll see if uh, the, pu the punter tries taking it away from him. And it's going to be a short punt. Very short. And that went out of bounds. The punt goes out of bounds. <laughs> Maybe eight yards past the line of scrimmage. So not even getting a first down on that punt. And it looks like Wayne Hills is going to get the ball on the 28-yard line of the Paramus Spartans. And talk about good field position right there. The Patriots will take over. Seems like the Patriots are comfortable with this game as you see some second team players start to come in. And I think because Monahan is so dangerous, uh, Lucas Stoyanovich wanted to keep it away from him. And I think he uh, really focused too much on keeping it away from Monahan, and he actually done kicking the ball. And I think it cost him right there. Hells is actually starting from their own 30. So, you know, they did get a first down technically. <laughs> and Olsen with the handoff, and this one goes right into the big pile of linemen. Gain of about one. Maybe Christian two Rodriguez for Christian Rodriguez. And I think Paramus at this point pretty dejected. 31 nothing with, you know, nearly a little less than 17 minutes left in this game. It's it's a game over pretty much. And Hill's going to keep putting points on the board. They're practically already in field goal range. Olsen looking to pass on this one. And he has a wide open receiver breaking three tackles and a big first down. Moskal is on that one. And it's number 22, Kevin Moskal. It is so tough to see these numbers. But they sort of, the maroon numbers blend in with the black jerseys. What do you think about the, the switch to the black jerseys this year? You know, I like the design a lot. Although, I, you know, as an announcer, I do have the uh, trouble of 
seeing who's who. Because uh, if you're not standing under center like Kevin Olsen or you're not a big lineman, I might not know who you are. <laughs> I, liked, I liked that. The fact that there were a specialty jersey last year and this year they're just being used every single game. I don't know. Justin That's my opinion on it, though. The we used to have, they used to be used as blackout jerseys. Game now every game's a blackout, I guess. The stands don't think so, though. <laughs> Justin Beverage had a two yard carry there to the 13 yard line of Paramus. I haven't seen maroon jerseys, and I have, I, I used to like the maroon jerseys a lot, and I would love to see those. And this one goes and end around to Monahan. Monahan's gonna break a tackle and get close to the first down marker on the opposite end of the field to about the nine yard line. And looks like it's gonna be about third and one on the gain of seven. So Monahan just continuing to show his dominance throughout this game, not letting Santoro take all the spotlight. <laughs> now for these guys, I don't think it's it's not at all about like a one man show. I think they all just love being here. They love you know what they do and they're you know blessed enough to play for such a fantastic coach and uh, Chris Olsen, such a fantastic legacy dynasty and Wayne Hills, and they love the opportunity to play. They definitely love winning. Now it is third and three, and there is a flag on the play as this one goes for a gain of, uh, certainly a first down, a gain of about five. Although it did not look like five from our angle. So it might be coming back. There is a flag on the play. And it's a legal motion against the Patriots, which I believe is a five-yard penalty, and that'll make it third and eight from the 17 for the Patriots. So that'll nullify Christian Rodriguez's first down carry. Wait. Sorry, Nick, you were uh, saying. Wayne Hill is just going to keep on scoring in this game, it looks like. I mean, what lead are they comfortable with? This will be third and seven for the Patriots, <laughs> 12-yard line. They... Came into this game in their four games going 147 points. It's now 178 through, you know, three and three quarters. So Olsen looking to pass, and that pass is certainly overthrown. Kevin pass intended, intended for Eric, Eric Moskal, but it's overthrown by a few yards, and it's going to be fourth down and seven from the 17. And I don't think Eric Martinez is going to come out for his second field goal attempt of the day. Talking to, uh, to Jason and Justin Evadisian before the game, they they didn't see this as an easy game. They thought this was going to be a challenging week. A Thursday night game, too, so that's going to throw them off a little bit. It is a Thursday night game, but I know for all of us, for all the crowd, or for all the fans in the crowd, excuse me, it certainly does not feel like a Thursday night. Just because I think we're so used to being here on Fridays or Saturdays, it feels like a weekend. But unfortunately, we have school tomorrow. That's when we're going to realize that this is a Thursday night game tomorrow morning <laughs> at 6 a.m. when the alarm clock goes off. <laughs> And Hills is going to go for it on fourth and seven. And Monahan throwing it up in the back of the end zone and it is incomplete. It's incomplete in the end zone. Yeah. And that was an interesting play that was intended for quarterback Kevin Olsen. Monahan used to be a quarterback back in middle school in a you know, freshman year. Made a decent pass there to the six foot two Kevin Olsen, but. Nothing doing there. You know, no harm, no foul. They're still up 31 nothing. I do like seeing Wayne Hills go to the Wildcat. I saw him go to a little bit last year. They had Dowling. This year they have Andrew Monahan back there who has quarterback experience. And Kevin Olsen is not a short guy. He's a tall kid, so he'll definitely be able to get some of those jump balls in the end zone. I love the, uh, you know, the trick plays when Coach Olsen just pulls him out of his hat. And we have first down and 10 from the 17. Busanic and shotgun. Hands it off, and this one goes nowhere. <laughs> Seems like they're sticking to the same shotgun handoff. Tyler Gargiulo ah. gains two on the play. The scoreboard says the ball's in the 17, the but the line of scrimmage looks to be at uh, about the 12 yard line. The it'll, be, it'll be a second and nine from about the 13, actually. as we approach the two minute mark of the third quarter. Wayne Hill's still with their first team out there pretty much from what I could see at least. I think with this, you know, shutout streak they have going, I don't know, you know, if they want to allow points and Paramus is not just gonna give up, they're still gonna play competitively to the end. Now coming into this week, Wayne Hill's is second ranked, so 
maybe they're just trying to show their dominance and get that first ranking over Sparta. Oh, in the PowerPoints, that's very true. I was looking at the Sparta schedule, and they haven't beaten their opponents too handily. I mean, Hills has beaten their opponents, you know, 34 nothing or you know 42 nothing, 30 to seven, whatever it is. And you know, Sparta's had some close games. Could it be a strength of schedule? Or? I'm not really sure, but I'm, you know, the strength of schedule. Hills certainly had their easy part of the schedule, you know, in the first few games and. Starting with this game, it's going to get a lot harder from here, but Hills is up to the task as we see at the scoreboard right now. I know the last game... Santa takes a snap and shotgun, looking for his receiver deep, and that one is caught, but I think he was caught out of bounds. And it is caught by number 22, Agarjulo, but he was out of bounds on the pass, and it's going to be third and nine on about 13-yard line. Now, I know Wayne Hill's last game is against St. Joe's, but their last two games are the hardest ones. I can't really remember what the second to last game is. With Ramapo and St. Joe's, Hills has, Hills has uh, four home games, including this one left, and one away game. The one away game is at Bergen Tech, and that'll be an easy win. That shouldn't be a problem at all. The four, t the four home games are going to be tough. Ridgewood, obviously this one, Ridgewood, uh, Ramapo, and St. Joe's. As you see, a handoff on third and ten to go for about three yards, so it's going to be fourth down and long. Number 34. So we'll see if uh, Lukas Janovic can redeem himself after his 12-yard punt. We'll see if he punts it to Monaghan this time. <laughs> Junior Nicolizia on the tackle. Fourth down for the Spartans. Number 33, Michael Urban back to punt. Oh, Michael Irvin, Number new punter, Monahan back to punt. And Monahan is back. And punt is almost blocked, and a decent punt that time. Went about, you know, 30 yards in the air, kept it away from Monahan. And I thought a win was play ran into the kicker, but the referee was right there, didn't didn't call a flag, or didn't throw a flag, so I guess it was some uh, acting on the part of Michael Irving. Urban. Well, when you're down 31 to nothing, you you got to do anything to try to <laughs> get things going your way. Very true, Nick. So with 37.7 seconds left in this third quarter, Wayne Hills will take over on the looks to be the 33-yard line of the Paramus Spartans. Olsen and shotgun hands this one off. And this is going to be a big gain out to out for Monahan. That one, that's going to be a first down for Andrew Monahan. As the clock is ticking, 20 seconds left in the third quarter, the and Monahan again on the end round with another big game. And it could just be me, but he seems to be faster than every Spartans player on the field right now. You've seen it in the first half, and you're still seeing it now. Even with that end round, he's able to get to the outside and beat all the Spartans up for at least a 10 yard game every time. And it looks at this point that that will be the last play of the third quarter. So I think that's all the time we have for the third quarter. That's at the end of the third quarter, it's Wayne Hills 31, Paramus Spartans 0. Wayne Hills shutout streak is still intact as of right now. And it has been a fantastic night. I'm going to bid you guys adieu. Nick, you'll take over when we come back. But right now, we're going to break. We'll be back after this. Excellent protection all the time in the world. Looking downfield, looking for Van Peenen. Triple covered, sticks it in there. Flags on the play. Van Peenen ahead to the 20, looking for the sideline. He's across the 10 near the goal line. Dives. Touchdown, Ray Van Peenen. And we're back to Patriot Stadium for this one. Excuse us for the. Pause, but I'm Nick Apolitro here taking over for play-by-play. -play. Joined by a former announcer in this game and a new one. We have Anthony Gabianelli here and Josh Mordkopf. So How you doing, Nick? Good to be here. This third quarter, really, just the same domination we've seen all game from Wayne Hills. Uh, what do you guys have to say about it, if there is much to say? Well, you know, my prediction from the beginning of the game is definitely off. I predicted a 28-7 victory from Hills, but... 
Uh, the shutout's continuing, and Hills has definitely stepped it up and is going to get the W today. Well, I predict this is going to be a blowout, and I think everyone knows that it is. I expect Wayne Hills just to continue on how they are playing, and they are playing very well. Yeah, I mean, coming into this game, there were there was rumors that it was going to be a close game. Pram is having a good team this year, but Wayne Hills just able to show their dominance as they've shown over the past decade. I agree. I and very much agree. And they have the 31 to nothing lead here in the fourth quarter. As Alex mentioned, they'll look to keep their shutout streak intact for the season. We're certainly not going to see the uh, the aforementioned prediction that uh, Paramus would be a, a much competition to Wayne Hills. I, I know previously against St. Joe's, they, they, they were a bit of uh, a th maybe not a threat, but they kept up a little bit before the half. But we're not seeing that at all tonight. Maybe that show is good for Wayne Hills at the end of the season. Then, as their last game against St. Joe's, they'll have it at home. And if they could blow out Paramus like this, and as you're saying, Paramus kept with St. Joe's up until the second half, um, it shows good things for Wayne Hills to come at the end of the season. Very true. Mm -hmm. So we'll have Olsen and Shotgun here, Monahan in motion, as he'll take the end around again. Excuse me, Olsen with the keeper on that fooled me. Yeah. As he'll gain about five. My hand had a huge hole right there. I just could have given him the ball. Another touch, Wayne Hill's touchdown right there. Yeah, definitely. If Monahan got that one, we might have been seeing six on the board. But Olsen with the keeper. And they've gotten to him a lot this year for the run. As Mike Quinn before him was taking a lot of the runs. And they'll continue to do it with Kevin trying to make him into a, a mobile quarterback. So as we have 10-40... One left in the fourth quarter. Wayne Hills leading 41, 31 to nothing, excuse me. Olsen still under center as I really don't think we'll see any second team person coming for Kevin Olsen as he is the quarterback of this team. Rodriguez on the handoff there. We'll get the first down and put Wayne Hills into. We see some good things out of Rodriguez tonight. You know, he's like my Brandon Savaki, number seven on the tackle with a spark. So we'll have first and goal for Wayne Hills here. Christian Graff seems like he stepped in there. If I could see right, number eight. As Alex mentioned before, with these black jerseys, it is a little hard to see the numbers, so we'll try to give you our best, our best view on that. The handoff goes to Rodriguez again. He'll bounce to the outside, in for the touchdown for Wayne Hills as they take the 37 to nothing lead over the Paramus Spartans. What, just what a great run right there. Just finds a nice little hole and completely takes that over. Once again, something the Wayne Hills running squad knows how to do. They know how to follow their blockers. And we can't forget. So sophomore Eric Martinez will come in to try to go perfect on the night in extra points. Monahan will be the holder. And another one good for Martinez as Wayne Hills takes a 38-0 lead with 9.50 left in the fourth quarter. I, th I believe my prediction was correct. A total blowout. I don't know, Anthony. No one heard it, so I don't think it happened if no one heard it. <laughs> Rookie. Oh, that's... I actually predicted a 38-0 game by 9.39 in the fourth quarter left, so I think I'm right. So I sure. I actually predicted it 9.40, so... Uh... <laughs> I'm so sure. So, Wayne Hills continuing their dominance of the season, 38 to nothing over Paramus with 920 left in the fourth quarter. You know, we see tonight that this Wayne Hills football, motiv the, the motivation that they carry just continues week in, week out, and they're going to continue to bring it. Every single week, they, they, they know what they have to do, and they get the job done. They have been. A lot of injuries have come to Wayne Hills this year. Schiller was injured. Zafino was right. also injured this year. I believe Matt Schunke was injured, and... They they just fight through it. They have such a deep bench that players are just ready to go in and they're ready to do what they need to do to start. Wayne Hills has a very, like you said, Nick, a very deep arsenal of football players. One guy comes out, another guy comes in and just gets the job done. They know how to compensate. 
for, and they have been compensating for other injuries this year, especially what we've seen uh, with the the three-man running back squad. I think that's the reason they've been so good over the years is just how deep their roster is, and every guy behind someone is just as good to play, and they're just as ready to go in as premise will be taken down behind the 20 yard line. And I think that's what's amazing about Wayne Hills. They're, it's not like they're just good one season. They've got they've got young guys that are just on the rise. People that we see out here, it's not a completely senior team like I've said before. They've got juniors who are showing their faces, making some great plays. The stars of their team aren't all seniors. Even with sophomores coming in, we Exactly. See Martinez, the kicker. Martinez, the kicker, who's been getting every kick this season. Doing Sophomore, a great job. Jake Van Peenen gets some of the snaps at running back as next year we'll probably see three running backs in, Rodriguez, Schiller, and Van Peenen. Michelle also. Michelle also, excuse me. As Framus doesn't look to gain anything on that play. Matt Byrne I've seen go in with, with the second team as a lineman. Michael so Irvin another sophomore the they're Harry. getting playing time as they just show how deep their roster is. As we'll have Gain of about two, it'll be second, second and eight, eight for 20. Paramus from their own 20 yard line. And Alex mentioned before, they haven't been able to break past the, the I want to say 30 yard line and they're just not able to get into field goal position to put any points on the board. Wayne Hills might be offside on this one. Yeah, I saw that. As they'll move up five, so we'll have encroachment against encroachment, the excuse me, but be five yards. we'll have a second and three coming up for Primus. Second and three from, from the 17 yard line. Good guess. 25 yard line. As the clock continues to wind down because of the mercy rule, so this fourth quarter is going to seem a little bit shorter than others, as we already have 6.26 remaining. Just really not much to talk about in this game. Wayne Hills, in this fourth quarter, they just completely dominating them throughout this whole game they have been. Matt Greenfield and Connor Michelle on the tackle for the Patriots. Now, now how many combined points does that make now, Nick? I believe before this game was, they've outscored their opponents 117, 47. Something like that to zero, of course. So they're up, they're up to either 150 or close to 200 points wow. to nothing in the past four games. The handoff. Not going to have much as just com three Wayne Hills players have to take him down. Just completely buried that guy. Great defense on that run. Very good defense there by Wayne Hills as that, that first team line is still in. It's with the exception of Nick Elizier, he gets some snaps when they have five linemen on. But the regular line has been Jason Evadisi and Justin Evadisi. Oh, Joe Lane, Matt Greenfield. And I don't remember that, so. After further calculation, um, we have learned that Wayne Hills has outscored their opponents 185-0 to zero this season, which is absolutely unbelievable. And it looks like they might even put more points up in this game as... Yeah, it's not over yet. As a 15-yard punt at the most for Paramus. So they've shown that punting isn't their strong game. Looks like they landed around the 38 out of bounds. So who knows if they're trying to keep it away from Andrew Monahan, the very big threat at, at punt return, or they're just trying to punt it out of bounds. Who knows? But we'll have 4.30 remaining in this game. As you see, Micah Bate stepping in for quarterback for Kevin Olsen. So that's when you know the game starts to get to be a blowout when the starting quarterback, Kevin Olsen, isn't even in. You know, Kevin did a great job tonight. He was my key player. Um, he, he, you know, he, just like he does every other week, he knows how to pass the ball. And him and Monaghan really connect very well with their little uh, quarterback wide receiver relationship. You know, Monaghan, another player, completely dominating this game tonight. Even on the end of rounds for Monaghan, he's shown that he could be a very big threat when he gets handed off the ball. 
Ice will have second and seven for Wayne Hills on the Paramus 32. Two receivers wide. A bait will hand it off to it looks like Van Peenen again. And he'll be just short of the first down. They just keep finding these holes and they add, they go a little deeper until they get that first down. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, Jake Van Peenen getting some snaps there, so trying to prepare for the future, just trying to get players' varsity experience so they know what it's like next year. A bait under center, two to the left, and another handoff this time will go to Van Peenen as he's able to cross the first down mark and get a little extra. Looks like he just reaches the uh, red zone right there. Right at about the 20 yard line for Van Peenen, so. Wayne Hill's looking at first and 10 from about the 20. I kind of like getting a look at uh, some of the younger players out in the football field. And I mean, they're, they're going to they're gonna give it their all. They want to, I mean, they've been given this opportunity. They're going to do everything they can to show their, uh, show, show a good performance. And when? Right like there wasn't the best, the almost fumble. <laughs> well, when you're only getting five, six plays a game, you really need to make your name out there to show that you can play at this level of football and that you want to start. So yeah. with the limited amount of playing time the sophomores and juniors get that don't start, they definitely do a good job of showing that they're worthy of the playing time. A bait still the quarterback as he gets the play from Coach Olson. Another handoff will go to Van Peen, and as he finds room to the right, but quickly tackled by number 21 for Paramus Joseph Rizzatella. I want to see one of these young guys put some points in the board. Yeah, definitely. You want to see Van Peen, and it looks like right now he's going to get it as he's gotten the last three or four plays. But I would I would like to see a bait try to air it out here, see, if, see what he could do at quarterback, because... Next year, if Wayne Hill is going to want to run the Wildcat, they're going to need to find another guy to replace Monaghan. And True. right now, it looks like a bait might be the guy as he's taking quarterback snaps. Now, who, Nick, who is going to, after Kevin Lee, which is not next year, but in two years, who do you think is going to be potentially the guy to take his place? Well, I, I really have a limited knowledge of the freshman Number and sophomore. Three, Mike, and but I don't know Patriots. that there's any... Any quarterback stepped up yet? It's it's really an open position. There's Peter Palzuski, who is the uh, quarterback for that freshman team. He's also the vice principal's uh, son, so he could possibly be one. I guess that gives him an edge. A very big edge. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure he's get along with it. I've always heard of of Palzuski's son as being a very good football player, so he'll have to wait another year after this one to really get his moment to shine. As Wayne Hills will go in that victory formation, they'll take the knee to end this game as the clock winds down. So Wayne Hills winning the game 38 to nothing over Paramus now. Game was said to be it was gonna be a close game at the beginning, but really didn't prove to be so. So I'm glad I was proven wrong. What are your thoughts on this game? I mean, really nothing other than a blowout, but anything you see good, anything bad, what? But, I mean, what I've, what I've noticed is that the success of the Wayne Hills football team really comes out of a few really, really big plays. You don't see as much of a, a general progression. It's, it's more of like a big punt return for Monaghan, a big passing play. Wayne Hills, not that they don't do a good job of, of playing small ball, it just doesn't really exist as opposed to making these huge plays, these huge, these huge catalyzing plays that really gets the game going and pushes the ball along. I will, this is just yet another great game for Wayne Hills, but the only thing I did not like in this game was the rushing was the uh, rushing defense for Wayne Hills in the first quarter. A lot of holes, and they just took they just took advantage over it, and they fixed that up, which I hope, which I'm glad. But they got to start even better every single game. Yeah, for for me, really the big thing. As you mentioned, Josh, it's really not its not gradual plays. It's more the big plays that they get the scores out of. And against the better teams, they're going to need to show that they can march down the field and score. But 
maybe on these worst teams, that's that's how they're going to score. But when they get to better teams, I'm sure that they'll do all right. I definitely think that's it. Yeah. I believe so. Well, that'll do it for us here from Patriots Stadium as your Wayne Hills Patriots win the game 38 to nothing over the Paramus Spartans. I'm Nick Appaluccio here alongside Josh Mordkoff and Anthony Gabinelli. We'll see you guys next week.